This video explains how to construct data frames using the data.frame function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In the first example of this video, I want to show you how to use the data.frame function to create a new data frame. And we can do that as you can see in lines two to five of the code. And within these lines of code, I'm applying the data frame function. And within this function, I specify four different columns. So at the left side, you can always see the column name that I want to use. So in this case, I want to call my columns x1, x2, x3, and x4. And then at the right side of each column name, I'm always specifying an equal sign. And on the right side, I specify the content of each column. So the first column should contain a vector ranging from one to five. The second column should contain the first five letters of the alphabet. The third column should contain a manually specified vector. And the third column should contain the character string XXX. And you might notice that I specify this character string only once, because if you specify a value only once, it's simply repeated in every row of the data frame. So after running lines two to five of the code, a new data frame object is created, which is called data one. You can also see this data frame appearing at the top right of RStudio. And now we can print our data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line six of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that we have created a data frame containing five rows and our four columns, x1, x2, x3, and x4. In this data frame, you can also see that the row names were automatically set to a range from one to the number of rows. However, we can change these row names manually, as you can see in lines eight to 12 of the code. So in lines eight to 11 of the code, I'm using basically the same syntax as in lines two to five. However, then in addition to that, I specify the row names argument. And to this argument, I assign a vector of row names that I want to use. So after running lines eight to 12 of the code, another data frame called data two is created. And if we print this data frame to the console, you can see that the values in our data frame are exactly the same as in the first data frame. However, the row names have been changed. In this data frame, you can also see that two of the columns contain character strings. However, within the data frame function, we can specify that character strings should automatically be converted to factor vectors. And we can do that as you can see in lines 15 to 19 of the code in the third example. So once again, in lines 15 to 18, I'm using basically the same syntax as in the previous examples. However, this time I also specify the strings as factors argument to be equal to true. So after running these lines of code, another data frame is created at the top right. And you can print this data frame to the bottom running line 20. And at this point, the data frame looks exactly the same as in example one of this tutorial. However, if we check the class of these data frame columns using the as apply and the class functions, as you can see in line 22 of the code, you can see that the two character columns have been converted to factor columns. So in the previous examples, I have explained how to construct data frames from scratch. However, it's also possible to convert other data types to the data frame class using the data frame function. And this is what I want to show you in the last example, starting in line 24 of the code. So in line 24, I'm first creating a matrix object using the matrix function. So after running this line of code, a new matrix object is appearing at the top right. And we can print this matrix to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 25 of the code. And then you can see that our matrix contains four rows and three columns and the data cells in this matrix contain numeric values. Now, if we want to convert this matrix to a data frame, we can simply apply the data frame function to this matrix, as you can see in line 27. And then I'm also storing the output of the data frame function in another data object that I call data four. So after running this line of code, this new data object is created and we can print it to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 28. And then you can see that our matrix object was converted to a data frame. And you can also see that the column names have been automatically selected by the data frame function. 
That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.